thing, friends. If you know me, you know the only thing I love more than hearing a good story is telling one. So every weekend in October, I'm going to be telling you a different story by the fire. And I know, we've already missed the first weekend in October, so I am going to make up for it by posting in November so that you still get five weeks of stories. It's a series I wanted to do last year, but with planning for the baby and everything, I just was not able to get around to it. So here we are this year, and if it's a series you really enjoy, maybe we'll do it again next year. So without further ado, tonight's story, submitted for your approval, is The Tale of the Gold of Hickory Nut Gap. Back in the 1700s, a group of six Englishmen were traveling through Hickory Nut Gap. They were coming from their mine a little bit north, and the plan was to reach the coast, return to England, and then retire on all of this gold that they had mined. But as they, with their mules and their cargo, were traveling through this area, a Cherokee tribe attacked. In an attempt to escape their pursuers, they took shelter in a nearby cave. They did their best to fight off the Cherokee, but they were clearly outnumbered. Night fell, and all but one of the men were killed in the conflict. The sole surviving man, before escaping, buried the gold inside of the cave. Under cover of night, he was able to slip away, and though very badly wounded, made it all the way to the coast. From there, he was able to get on a ship back to England. Once he had recovered from his wounds, he planned to organize an expedition to return to the colony to search for his buried treasure. However, before he could do that, he lost his sight. Still, he was determined to retrieve his gold. So he dictated a map and directions and sent a party in his place over to North Carolina. They searched and searched. Despite having his directions and this map that he had dictated, though, they were unsuccessful in finding his gold. Many people have searched for it over the years and even claimed to have copies of this map, the original of which, supposedly, is in the Library of Congress. Now you may be wondering what mountain this gold was buried in. That would be Round Top Mountain, located directly across from Chimney Rock. So some gold was buried in a cave in the 1700s and has never been found. That's the end of the story, right? Maybe not. While researching this story a couple of years ago, I stumbled across a very interesting thread on a treasure hunting forum. On this thread, a poster claims that back in the 1970s, a coworker of his father was out squirrel hunting in the Hickory Nut Gap area. When he sat down to take a rest, he noticed something, a small opening in the rock face. So he climbed up there to explore. While he was crawling around inside of this tunnel system, he found something. And whatever it was, he was not able to get free and take with him by himself. So he rushed out of the cave and back home, which was not far away, and called up his nephew. He needed him to come down right away. There was something he needed his help with. And then he drew out a map to the location he was just in. Tragically, he suffered a fatal heart attack before the nephew could get there. The nephew never pursued this treasure hunt but did hold on to the map, which he later passed on to this poster's father. The man's father passed away, but did tell him the location of the map, which had been in his house all of these years. And the poster and his own son had plans to take this map and go explore the Hickory Nut Gap area. He also claimed that the location of this gold is much further north than stories say, which is why folks searching for it all of these years have not been able to find it. Obviously, many events have happened 
since the gold was buried in the 1700s, there are the earthquakes in nearby Rumbling Bald, the flood of 1916, and then recently Hurricane Helene. If the gold is there, it has probably been buried even deeper inside of Round Top Mountain. This story has been widely circulated over the decades. It has shown up in the State Magazine at least three times that I've found over the years. It's been posted on blogs. It's been published in books of Western North Carolina folklore. What do you think? Is there any truth to it or is this just a yarn someone spun a long time ago? All right, that's all I have for you tonight. I hope you enjoyed this story and I can't wait to see you again next week.